Welcome to an example of an improper integral where we have a discontinuous integrand on the interval of integration. We want to determine if the integral converges or diverges. If it converges, we want to evaluate the integral. And if it diverges, we want to indicate if it approaches positive or negative infinity. So looking at the integral, notice how it might not seem like an improper integral because the lower limit of integration is not negative infinity or the upper limit of integration is not positive infinity. But if we take a look at the integrand here, notice how when x equals five, we'd have a denominator of zero, meaning we'd have division by zero, and therefore the function value is undefined, and therefore we do have an improper integral. We could also verify this graphically. Notice how the graph of the integrand would be this rational function where we have a vertical asymptote at x equals positive five. So if we want to integrate from five to eight, we'll have to write it as a limit approaching five from the positive side or right side. So we'll write this as the limit of let's say c approaches five from the positive side, and now we'll substitute c for five, giving us the integral from c to eight Let's rewrite the integrand as two times the quantity x minus five to the negative one-third. Remember, if we have a cube root, it's equivalent to a to the one-third power. And if we have one divided by a to the positive one-third power, that's equivalent to a to the negative one-third power. So we applied both of these properties here to rewrite the integral. And now we'll integrate. We might be thinking u substitution here, where we let u equal the quantity x minus five. Well, if we do this, notice how du is just equal to dx. So we can go ahead and just add one to the exponent and then divide by the new exponent. So we'd have the limit as c approaches five from the right of two times the quantity x minus five to the positive two-thirds power divided by two-thirds. Our limits of integration are from c to eight. But instead of dividing by two-thirds, we can multiply by the reciprocal of three halves. Two times three halves equals three. So we can write this as limit as c approaches five from the right of three times the quantity x minus five to the two-thirds. And I will first substitute eight for x and then c for x. So when x is eight, we would have three times eight minus five is three, so three to the two-thirds minus, substituting c for x, we would have three times the quantity c minus five raised to the two-thirds power. And I will determine this one-sided limit. Notice how this first term is not affected by c at all. So we would just have three times three to the two-thirds minus, as c approaches five from the right, c minus five approaches zero. So this term approaches zero, and therefore the limit is just three times three to the two-thirds power. Or if we wanted to, in radical form, this would be three times, the denominator would be the index, the cube root, of three squared or nine. So we can see the limit does exist and therefore the definite integral does converge and its value is three times three to the two-thirds power or three times the cube root of nine. And just in case you're wondering, this would be approximately 6.2403 if we wanted a decimal approximation. Now if we go back and take a look at the graph of this function again, on this interval, notice how it is non-negative, which means on the interval from five to eight, the area below the function and above the x-axis would be three times the cube root of nine square units. So the area of this shaded region, it's exactly three times the cube root of nine square units. or we can say it's approximately 
6.2403 square units. I hope you found this helpful.